want everybody here to know, this is not the end. This is the beginning. We were getting to the point of the season where we needed a break, like we needed a bye week, bad. Everyone was just a little bit on edge because we hadn't performed offensively the way we would have liked dating back to the Kentucky game. So it was like a four game stretch there where it was like, you know, we, Kentucky was rough and then Ole Miss was not very good. And then comes, you know, South Carolina. Saturday night game on ESPN, nationally televised. South Carolina had a great team coming in, coached by Spurrier. South Carolina was always a tough football team. And that's the, the best thing I can say is they were hard nosed. Like they were always ready to play us. Full disclosure, I'd never experienced adversity in my life as a player. I never lost a game as a starter, like never started a game with my first attempt to be an interception, like that never happened. So I can remember vividly on the first attempt of the game, trying to like check it down to Roy Up Church and he breaks to the right. Fires over the middle, it's intercepted by South Carolina. I try to throw it late over the middle. I throw it right where Roy was, not where Roy was going. And then the rest of the game, I was just seeing ghosts, like the whole time. Play action, McElroy wants it all, going deep. And it is almost intercepted. Whoops, high snap, loose ball, look out. McElroy flush throws on the run, and it completes. And it's been a tough night for number 12. McElroy, look out. They got it this time, and the ball's out. We struggled from the get-go against this defense, but there, there came a point we just put our foot down and said, okay, enough's enough. We are going to give the ball in our best football player's hands and put it behind the offensive line and see if we can get it done. Mark Ingram now in the Wildcat formation is just going to take the direct snap and take off. And he might take off. Yeah. Wow, why not? Why not? That one particular drive, I think they handed, I got the ball like six times in a row. We run a Wildcat. So we just kept running the plays, calling different runs out of it, and we were able to run down the field. Third in the yard. Got it again. And Mark's got 15, Mark's got 10, Mark's got 20, and it's like, are we really about to do this against this defense? They ride the handoff to Julio Jones, and now Ingram heading to the left side, looking for a block down the sideline. Ingram all the way to first and goal. We were just able to move the ball. We were able to move the ball out of the Wildcat somehow. And now it's a stadium record. 242 for Mark Ingram. He got down to like the two or three yard line and they threw me a toss and finished the drive off. Here. Ingram! Touchdown! And that kind of helped push us past that hump of that game and getting the win. I celebrated is the ugliest celebration of all time. I literally did the worst like jump scissor kick. Like, and I only got this far off the ground. And number 22 is the hero of the night. I remember just being so thankful after that game, but yet feeling so guilty. Looking back on it, learning how to deal with adversity, learning how to deal with a really slow start, that was something I never really knew how to do. I'm also just really lucky to have had a running game and a defense on my side that can bail me out of a really, really impossible spot that I put them in. <laughs> it's just, it's a microcosm, in my opinion, of what that entire season was. There was some struggles, there were some ups and downs, we had a good football team, and in the end, we put our foot down and we were able to get it done. The Crimson Tide are 7-0 and 4-0 and atop the SEC West. What's funny about the Tennessee games, I don't, I don't remember a whole lot about it. It just didn't feel like a big game. Uh, Lane Kiffin versus Nick Saban, I mean, it's not, you know, Rockney versus Bryant. It was Lane's only year um, in Knoxville. Lane was a lightning rod for a lot of a lot of attention, you know, and, and it had been brash. But I remember them saying that there are no headphones. The headsets, yeah, headsets. are not yep. working on the Tennessee side. That's what I thought. Alabama will probably have to take Tennessee theirs off. Headsets are malfunctioning. Therefore, both teams will have to remove their headsets till the problem is fixed. There's someone that disabled their headphones, and it wasn't an Alabama person. I'm convinced of it. Like, <laughs> that's just my conspiracy theorist point of view. So McIlwain is gonna have to come down onto the field. I'm like, we're good, I got the first eight down, I got the first third down down. But they brought a blitz on the third play of the game that they hadn't run before. 
Watch out, McElroy. Eric Berry, untouched. And was it, was it cheap? Yeah, like <laughs> to get us feeling a little antsy with the headphones going down early, I, I think was a little bit of gamesmanship. I remember being completely out of, out of gas as a team. And I remember getting in the red zone a few times and not being able to, to get in the end zone and us being just so incredibly frustrated. It was still a game where you felt like that for the first three quarters, Alabama was in control of the game. And then all of a sudden you get in the fourth quarter and you're like, they could lose this game. They could absolutely lose this game because they're not being efficient, not scoring on offense like they need to score. Thankfully, Lee Tiffin makes a couple of long kicks, kind of puts us in good position, but you still never felt comfortable about it. The nine point lead against Tennessee that year felt like an insurmountable lead for a team. You know, the one thing we didn't do was fumble the football. Uh, Mark Ingram, I don't think, had a fumble all season until that Tennessee game. I think a 100-yard game is important for Ingram for the Heisman talk. Well, he uh, picked up a few right there. There's a fumble yeah, the ball and a loose down. ball. Never fumbled He's before. never lost a fumble. Everything that happened after that was so improbable. It was like, there's no way this is going to happen. Oh, my God, that just happened. Sure enough, they go down score in like a two-minute drive towards the end of the game. This is Gerald Jones, touchdown Tennessee. And then sure enough, they get the onside kick. Tennessee, I think, yes. It's like, oh no, you gotta be kidding me. If we lose to Tennessee and we score 12 points, that's the worst thing ever. The next thing you know, it's like, dang, they're on field goal range. Crofton, good block, it's caught. I mean, I was sick to my stomach and I actually turned when they lined up for the kick, I turned around to the opposite end zone, the jumbotron in the corner of the end zone. And I just, I remember being like, I'm not watching. Like I can remember vividly thinking to myself, like there's no chance this ball's going to the uprights. Lincoln for the lead. Blocked again, Cody again. Oh my. Wins. Elation is not even a good enough word. I mean, I literally fell to a knee, said a Hail Mary, and then ran out on the field like, oh my God, what just happened? I thought Alabama had lost. I was just in a state of shock afterwards. Like, I cannot believe they won the game. You can do the geometry. The ball couldn't have been. What would Terrence Cody's vertical leap have been? Two, 2.5. Julio is 13 feet in the air behind him. It's unbelievable. Coach Bryant once told me you got to have a little schedule luck, got to have a little injury luck. Doesn't matter how good you are. So all you can do is get the best players, prepare them to play the best you can. Got to have a little luck. There's usually a moment like that in the season uh, when you win a national championship. Not always, but uh, that was it. But as the season went, moved on, it, it became just a footnote as all Tennessee games have become. The Iron Bowl is hard to really sum up until you've lived it as a starter. To feel the intensity of the rivalry, knowing that you were gonna have to go out there and perform was on another level. It was my first Iron Bowl as a head coach, right? And what I do remember is that we just came off a real tough seven point loss to Georgia two weeks earlier, and then we had an off week. And the year before, they had gotten beat 36 nothing. Yeah, it was kind of hard to take Auburn too seriously. The 08 season was such a disaster. A new coach in, so Alabama fans were feeling pretty good. We put together a game plan and we really felt solid. And a matter of fact, I told them that we're going to score first in the game. And immediately when we score first, we have an onside kick built in that we're going to surprise onside kick. We're going to go and get the ball and go down and score again. That's how the game is going to unfold. Like you've done all year. Trickery, little pitch coming around the end. Terrell Zachary, big room, 50, 40. Watch out, 30. Makes a cut back, 20. Zachary, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. And I said, when we score, nobody look at me. I don't want anybody giving away anything that might happen. We don't know where the cameras are. It's business as usual. You know when we huddle up on the sideline, you know what we're doing. We don't even need to call it. Then we're very successful. Outside kick. All the 
Matrix coming out in Iron Bowl 74. It was clear that they weren't intimidated. And, and I think in year one for Gene Chizik, that was actually really important for those players. And we actually went up 14 nothing. We just knew that the only way we could defensively stay in the game was to make sure that we matched the physicality blow for blow. And they had two first round picks at tailback, at least in our eyes, Mark Ingram and Trent Richardson. And we didn't care how many people we had to stack up around the box. If they were going to beat us, they had to beat us throwing the ball. Go to Ingram. And Ingram, one, two, three, four, five. My goodness, they have been on him all day. Ted Roof was their defensive coordinator. And he was like, we told our kids, no matter what happened, that Mark Ingram was not going to win the Heisman in Jordan Air Stadium. And he won the Heisman, but it definitely wasn't because of it happened in Jordan Air Stadium. You know, it's, it's like we always say, defensive guys always say that, you know, you go into a plan and if they beat you at something that you know they're great at, if you don't take that away, you regret it on Sunday morning. We took it away. We took it away. Again, nothing. Absolutely nothing up the gut. All of a sudden, I remember standing on the uh, Alabama sideline at the end of the game going, are, are they going to blow this blow a shot at winning a national championship? We couldn't seem to finish any drives. Like we were able to get into the red zone, but had to settle for a couple field goals, and then it's 21-20, and we're backed up with our backs to their student section. But I remember looking up at the clock, and it being under 10 minutes, and thinking to ourselves, like, man, we we got to put something together here. We literally had field position. We had everything we wanted in the fourth quarter, and they start this drive. That drive uh, is as memorable a drive uh, as I can remember of that era. You could tell from the moment Alabama got the ball, they were going to get the job done, and it was it was like death by a thousand cuts. Third down three. He's wide open. There he is. McElroy, good protection. The catch. And McElroy throws. Caught. Play clock to six. McElroy sets up and throws. Jones. McElroy dumps oh, it off. Boy. Richardson room at the twenty. At the fifteen. Chop down the 12 yard line in motion. They're going to stay on the ground past the five yard line goes Richardson. I remember everything that was not happening right for these guys for three and a half quarters is happening right now. We get down there and we hadn't thrown a goal line pass all year. Like it just, Mark was running it, offensive line was a road grader. Like we just didn't throw goal line passes. And this wasn't quite in a goal line situation, it was just inside the five. But coach says, hey, we're going to throw it, we're going to do the upchurch throw. One of my favorite teammates, and I just remember when they made that play call on the sideline and we ran out, I thought, oh my God, he is about to be an Alabama hero for this play. The formation is near I left Peter Pass right X corner, and it, it, was, it was one of those plays that we had run every single week of the season. And sure enough, week 12, we're, we're finally pulling it out of the arsenal. We said if they're going to beat us, that's how they're going to beat us. And um, we stopped the run that day. But that one drive with the game on the line, you know, made all the difference. They got the big fella in the backfield. They're going to play action on the rollout. McElroy, touchdown up church! <laughs> it just, you know, Greg puts this, it, it wasn't like a line drive, it wasn't like a floater, it was just the most perfect ball, and to have that kind of moment, just, I know that had to have been heartbreaking for them, because that was one of the best moments of my life. It was one of those scenarios where we had every opportunity to close the door and win it, and, you know, we, we didn't. That's why they were the national champs. To have them, you know, get punched in the face repeatedly, and then take the ball and go down the field with everything on the line. I think that was, I'd say, a statement drive for Greg McElroy, for Nick Saban, and I would say the program, because you saw at that point, after the disappointment in 08 in the SEC Championship game, that team kind of had that killer instinct. A couple plays later, knocked down the Hail Mary, and, and we're into the SEC Championship at 12-0. Jump ball! Incomplete, and Alabama stays undefeated. Quite frankly, you know, great players make great plays when games are on the line. We made them beat us left-handed. The problem is they beat us left-handed. That's what happened. Thanks, Corals. Here for you since 1920. They hand Coach Saban the crystal ball, and I don't know if it ever made it on a telecast, but I looked at Rolando and Mark, and I was like, you know, you won the Buckus Award. You won the Heisman, like how about y'all let me get this ball first? Like how about y'all let me kiss it first? 
And <laughs> Rolando goes, give it to Mike, coach. Give it to Mike. Give it to Mike. And he just watches it cross his face with his eyeballs, and he puts it down into my, you know, Chris Saban puts it down in my hands, and I just smooched it. And I was like, this is the greatest day ever.